Welcome to the Immersive at Mill Sounds video series. Initially, I'm going to release three videos right out of the gate. Most of this starting out is going to focus on the barefoot sound monitors that I use to do the 7.1.4 system in here. The second video is going to focus on the Footprint 03 series and their new Footprint 03 center channel. Then the third video is going to focus on their LFE 15 subwoofer. Um, pretty straightforward products, but there were a lot of workarounds and things that I had to do to kind of integrate this unique system because I have a dedicated stereo setup with my MM45s that I've had for a while, and I'm sharing the LFE 15 sub between the stereo set with a crossover as well as using it for the 0.1 LFE channel for the 7.1.4 uh, immersive setup. So a bit of a complicated setup with some workarounds that I had to figure out. I'll probably go ahead and in the YouTube playlist, I'll throw in my review of the Audient Aurea as well, the interface I'm using for all this because it helped kind of integrate all this together and facilitate some really unique workarounds. So most of this is just going to be kind of technical specific things about my setup so that if any of you are thinking about getting into Dolby Atmos or Immersive, you know, this might give you a head start of what to expect and some of the things to think about when you're starting to integrate a setup because everyone's going to be unique. I think my setup's probably going to be more on the complicated side of the spectrum, so might give you some things to think about um, when you're, you know, figuring out how to do it for your room. Um, for this first video, I just wanted to do a brief overview, tell you what to expect from the first three videos. Hopefully I'm going to add to this YouTube playlist as I start doing more stuff in immersive, but I'll tell you right up front, I'm approaching Atmos very differently from most people. I think the big trend right now is to take things that have already been mixed in stereo and then bounce out a bunch of stems and do an Atmos mix of it as well. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. I mean, I've really enjoyed listening to a bunch of stuff on Apple Music and comparing the stereo and the immersive versions. It's been a lot of fun, but it's my opinion that this whole Atmos thing is going to really come into its own when people stop thinking about it as, you know, kind of an afterthought where it's just a remix platform and people really start to think about this and doing projects specifically from Atmos from the beginning where, you know, we're writing differently, we're arranging differently, we're recording differently. When we really start thinking about Atmos as something other than an afterthought, I think we're really going to start to see some really cool things. So um, in general, I just wanted to kind of, before we get into the speaker technical stuff, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what to expect if you're thinking about getting into Atmos Right up front, um, it's going to be way more expensive than you think it is, and it's going to take a lot longer than you think it's going to take, and it's going to turn your life upside down for a while. I've been thinking about this and kind of working on it under the hood for over two years at this point. Um, I've been working on, a, on headphones, learning kind of the workflow, trying a bunch of things, um, thinking about it and going back and forth, because um, you'll find out pretty quickly that everyone's extremely opinionated about Atmos. So I I would urge everyone to really think this through very carefully because there's plenty of reasons not to do this. But in my case, I have some very specific and unique reasons to do this. And um, I think I'm going to end up trying a bunch of new things and figuring some stuff out. So that side of it's really exciting for me. But just thinking about this, you know, if you followed my channel or you know me, you knew that, you know, a year ago I had a big API console in here. I had a bunch of outboard gear. All of that's gone now. Um, it just, the more I thought about all the technical aspects of Atmos and integrating a stereo world and an Atmos world, I just realized really quickly that to do this right, I didn't really have the budget to marry the stereo world and the Atmos world together. I kind of needed to start from scratch and kind of start fresh with Atmos and then slowly grow into things over the next years and see where things go. Um, I sold everything. The API console is gone. Most of the outboard gear is gone. I really started from scratch when I put in the Atmos system. 
So it's been a massive change. It's kind of, you know, again, starting over after being used to having all this gear and stuff, you know. I wouldn't say it's like being in the ghetto or anything right now right now i mean i don't want to give the impression that you know oh man all these first world problems oh all i have is this nice barefoot system now wah 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 i've uh it's funny i've told people for years when they ask advice for starting a studio and budgeting for stuff i always tell people to think about your signal chain and start from the beginning and work your way back as you buy things so most people say well what does that mean well What's the first thing in your chain? And I think most people would be tempted to say, you know, the microphone, because that's the first thing that comes into play. Um, obvious good starting point. I always tell people, well, what about the instrument? You know, kind of chicken before the egg thing here. But, you know, I've always told people the first thing that happens when you record music is you hear something coming through the speaker. And if you're not hearing it accurately, um, there's no point in spending thousands and thousands of dollars on microphones and outboard gear and all this stuff if you're not hearing it correctly. And so I've been really critical telling people for years to start out budgeting most of their initial budget on a nice pair of monitors so you have as good of a starting point as you can afford. And I've nailed that mindset into people for years. And so I didn't want to be hypocritical about this. If I was starting over, I just, at some point, you know, I went back and forth so many times on trying to decide if I was going to just do a really cheap Atmos system to start out and then, you know, kind of ease into it and see what I thought. And then, you know, maybe invest in a different, better speaker system at some point. I went back and forth on that so many times. At the end of the day, I just decided, you know, you're either going to do this Atmos thing or you're not. Like, make a decision, dude. And so I put my big boy pants on. I made a decision. I just decided to go with a really nice speaker system. And um, thankfully, Barefoot was there to help me out through all this and, you know, let me buy directly from them. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, so, yeah, I've decided to do a 7.1.4 system. I have probably, I think my room specs are pretty much the smallest room that you can have that um, like when you start looking at stuff in the Dolby Atmos uh, render uh, or not the render, the, um, the dart tool, it's basically this room design tool. That's a spreadsheet that Dolby will give you to help you figure out where you're going to place all your speakers. My room is like 14 feet by 12 feet by 10 feet. So, uh, you know, this is bigger than a lot of, bedrooms um control room wise but um i would say this is probably about the minimum size that you can have for a control room that's actually going to like pass the dolby specs now i you'll get a ton i i really don't want to inject too much opinion into this stuff yet because again uh tensions get pretty crazy when people start talking about atmos but I, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to get approved to be like a Dolby approved room because they don't, Dolby doesn't really approve music studios officially anymore. Um, I went through the whole process and I've been, you know, technically certified to where they've actually put my studio on the music list. Um, again, you kind of had to go through a process of making sure you did everything right in the dark tool and you had approved speakers and you put everything where they wanted it and you did the room correction and the speaker delays and everything. So I've been approved. I'm on the list. That was a little bit of a process, but, um, don't stress out about that too much. Um, you know, if you're going to do this, just go ahead and dive in and get started and then just tweak as you go, because that's been my mindset too. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to start doing a whole bunch of extra acoustic treatment in here now that I've got everything set up with sonar works and I've got the speakers place, you know, it's a whole new world of acoustical, acoustical issues when you throw 11 speakers in a room as opposed to two that are right up front. So now that I've got everything set up with Sonarworks, I'm able to start seeing specific problems in the room with all these speakers. So that's going to be a process. So all that to say, just expect an ongoing process. It's going to take a while. Um, it's going to be a lot more expensive than you think it is. When I was trying to do different budgets, when I looked at 
some starter kits, you know, you'll see some really small, cheaper uh, speaker setups that come uh, packaged with a smaller budget Atmos specific interface for like, I've seen them as low to, as like three to five thousand dollars. That's like probably about as low as you can do um, budget wise in terms of a interface and speaker setup. But keep in mind, you're going to have to mount things on the ceiling. And depending on the speakers, you might have to do different mounts. The mounts I had to do for the Footprint 03s were about $200 each, and I needed four of them. I needed a whole bunch of speaker stands on the floor for the seven floor speakers. I um I was pretty proud of how it came out um, budget-wise on those. But, I mean, I got some good stands, but there are still more budget stands. They weren't, like really nice crazy stands but i mean all of those were still i think about twelve hundred dollars um by the time i did all the quarter inch cabling because um you can go quarter inch into all the barefoot speakers and then the audience oreo was all quarter inch in by the time i did quarter inch cables for all those that was over a thousand dollars and again i i was budgeting like pretty well for all this i didn't go crazy on any of this and get top shelf stuff i just made sure i didn't buy you know crap hosa or something um sorry if you like hosa um i won't i won't go into that (laughs) i won't go there but all that to say you know all this stuff adds up really really quickly so even if i ended up going with like a budget interface and a really budget speaker system and then mounted everything got the stands got the cables um you're still going to be floating by the time everything's all said and done. You're not counting anything else in like additional acoustic treatment or anything. You, I I would say you're still going to be floating around 10 grand once all is said and done. I think I kept coming up with that number over and over again. I think that's kind of the magic sweet spot right now, but you can do it cheaper if you're a little more frugal or if you make your own cables. But I would say bare minimum to get into Atmos with a cheaper set of speakers and smaller interface, you know, six to eight grand. If you're lucky, expect 10 grand. It adds up quickly. I'm telling you, it just, it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, there's the software side of things. It just, trust me, it, it gets nuts. Um, expect to spend more than you budget. So at that point, once I budgeted like over a year and went back and forth a bunch of with a bunch of different hypothetical scenarios, doing this cheaper, doing it more expensive. I just kind of fell into this really nice sweet spot where I was like, you know, it's not going to take that much money to go with something pretty baller like the Footprint 03s because I already had MM45s in here. I've worked with barefoot monitors for years and years and years. Like I trust them. I know them. They work well for me. Um, The Footprint 03s, were newer. They're fully three-way systems, full range. I mean, it wasn't going to take that much more money. Considering you're looking at spending 10 grand already for a budget setup, you know, it's kind of these incremental things where you're like, well, maybe I'll just save and spend a little bit more. Maybe I'll just save and spend a little bit more. So I intentionally put this off for a few years so that I could really think this through, go back and forth on things, save some money. And so it just got to that point where I was like, man, it's not going to take that much more money just to save up for something really, really nice. And again, I've always told people when they're budgeting for an initial studio build, spend a good chunk of that money on speakers so that you know what you're hearing is good. Get that out of the way so as you start to invest in some nicer outboard gear and some nicer microphones, you know, You're actually hearing what those things are doing as opposed to, you know, spending 10 grand on a compressor when you've got $500 speakers. Um, I know some people will disagree with me on that, but my philosophy is that that's kind of dumb. But anyway, expect to spend a lot more on Atmos than you think. Expect it to take a lot longer than you think and expect it to drive you crazy. But once you have it all set up, man... (laughs) <laughs> this is a pretty amazing little setup in here. I've had, I've been trying to like slowly work a bunch of musicians into the mindset of maybe trying to do a few songs here and there in Atmos and, 
you know, trying to tell them about how it works and playing things for them on the speakers. And everyone's kind of just, you know, a little overwhelmed and blown away when they hear things and think about the possibilities of, you know, again, treating this as something other than an afterthought of, you know, yay, my stereo mix is done. Let's do this in Atmos as opposed to let's do one song in Atmos and really think about how we're going to write differently for this, how we're going to arrange things differently, how we're going to stack electric guitars differently when we have all this space. Um, the sky's the limit when you start thinking about Atmos as something other than an afterthought. So that's kind of my philosophy. That's what I'm doing. Um, expect there to be a huge mess in your studio for a few months i'll play some iphone videos of just when all the barefoot speakers got here i mean just that was a mess in my in my um walk-in area in the studio right out there you know the um i think it was over 500 pounds on that pallet when they delivered it that LFE 15 sub was over 150 pounds in the packaging and the box. Um, I had, when I was unpacking the barefoot speakers, I had a pile like five or six feet high of boxes in my live room. I had a ton of boxes of cr empty crap upstairs in my apartment. It just, there was stuff everywhere. I, I'm not kidding. Um, this, if you're thinking about doing this, think it through because you're going to be down for a while. Your place is going to be a mess for a while. It's going to drive you crazy. Um, it is a big investment, both um, financially and emotionally. So really think this through if you're thinking of getting into Atmos. Um, I'm so glad I did it. I'm thinking about the last two years and how much work it just took, especially just the last four months to get all this set up. It's it's been crazy. It's been a whirlwind, but, um, once you get it all set up, it's pretty awesome. But, um, I think that's a good, good place to start a good idea of what to expect moving forward. Um, again, most of this is going to focus on the barefoot side of things starting out and all the workarounds I had to do to facilitate this unique setup. So, um, I think that'll do it for the intro. Let's go ahead and we'll start jumping into the speaker stuff. <laughs> 